Hi, my name is James Holroyd from Pocket Survey Cloud Surveying Software. Welcome to this training session. I'm going to show you how the asbestos survey software works and how to create your surveying reports quickly and easily. It can also be used for asbestos priority assessments. It should be about 20 minutes long. If you're not already a PS Cloud user, contact us to get your low cost trial, where you can get your first month's subscription at a reduced price. And if you don't like the software after your initial month, there's no obligation to continue with your subscription. The first thing to mention about the app is that it's designed for mobile devices, but also works great on desktop computers. There's only one interface to learn, which looks the same on all devices. So you can use it on Apple, Android, tablets and phones, as well as desktop computers, such as Windows, Mac and Chrome. With our uncluttered and easy to use interface, you can speed up your workflow tremendously and produce your asbestos survey reports immediately after doing your site inspections. All our cloud-based apps look similar and have some common features. So, before we create a complete report from scratch, I'll briefly explain the common features running across all our PS Cloud apps. The button at the bottom left accesses all your reports, showing your building reports organised by town. At the top left, the main menu gives you access to valuable features such as the jobs calendar, location maps, jobs progress, users, client information, laboratories used for sampling, app setup features, help and support, and even the ability to export your data to spreadsheets. Pocket Survey has a unique feature that allows you to customise the menus and report structure within the app setup. We'll come back to that later on. So let's look at an asbestos survey I've already done to give you an overview of what comes out at the end. So on the buildings list, I tap into the record and you'll see the front page photo. And then there are some buttons. You can add asbestos items, copy the building, and create the PDF asbestos report. And then open the generated asbestos report. There's also a valuable samples report that you can send to your laboratory along with your asbestos samples. And as we scroll down, you'll see the building address and the clients. Now, the clients feature can be turned off in the app setup. Then we have the inspection details, the inspector, inspection date, inspection time, the type of survey. We cover all the types, including management, demolition, sampling, reinspections, etc. There are some comments. And you've got the inspection status, which you can change between scheduled, started, pending, and completed. And also the optional quality checker. Then you've got some building details, such as the description, the town, age band, building construction, samples lab, and most importantly, the list of suspect items, non-asbestos areas, exclusions, and so on. If you click the view button, you'll see all the items in a long list. Suspect items first, then well, there's asbestos areas, excluded areas. And also, if you work for housing associations, an area summary, so let's go back to the building record. And scroll down a little bit more. You've now got a place for some building images, such as floor plans, which you can label and draw on. Finally, you've got some sample certificates. You can click the Add button if you want to add new sample certificates. If you want to add new floor plans, you click the Add button. If you want to add new items, you click the Add button at the bottom of the list. If you want to edit the building record, you can click Edit. So let's scroll back up to the top to create the report. Once you've done your survey, you click the Create Report button, and then after about 30 seconds, extra buttons will appear here, and you can then open the report as a PDF. And also there's a Samples report for your lab. We'll look at that later. Let's look at a typical asbestos report in more detail. The front page is branded with your logo and your address. Then you've got your front photo of the building, plus an optional trade logo. Then you get an automatic table of contents, which is all hyperlinked. So you can jump to the different sections quickly. The report contains quite a lot of detailed information, or created at a click of a button. Some sections are optional and can be turned off in the app setup. The important executive summary shows identified and presumed asbestos items in priority order. Then you've got an introduction page. Now all these phrases can be edited within the app. The inspection method section will have different boilerplate text depending on what type of survey you did. The overview section of the report shows inspection details, building details, and optional client details. Now, if you've been asked to do area summaries by your client, you can capture a lot of general information about the building, room by room. There's a useful summary of asbestos findings. All of this is calculated for you. Then for each asbestos element and relevant areas in the building, we show detailed information. This information covers item and location, description, sample details, and free format notes. 
You can have up to two photos for each asbestos item. Each asbestos item is shown in a similar format. There's a section for any excluded areas. Then a section for non-asbestos items or non-asbestos areas. Your clients will love the report format. You have an asbestos register organised by fibre release score. There's a page explaining any recommendations to your client and a detailed explanation of the actions they should take. Even though you can include sample certificates in your report, it's also useful to present lab results in a neat little table. The asbestos assessment algorithm is explained in detail. There's a user-definable scope of inspection page. The quality assurance statement will show the inspector's signature and if you've chosen to use quality checkers, their details as well. At the end you have your four plans and any sample certificates you've included in your report. If you want to save your PDF report, tap the download button to save it to your storage area. Let's close the PDF report and get back to the app. We can return to the buildings list by tapping the buildings icon at the bottom left. So let's start the new asbestos survey to see how easy it is. Tap the add button at the bottom right of the buildings list screen. You'll see a scrollable form with several fields to fill in. Most of these will be user configurable menus to speed up data entry. First, you can choose a client or if you want to add a new one. Let's add a new client organization. Type my client, then tap use. Then you can either add a client contact name or pick an existing one. You can store other information about your client, which is helpful if you want to contact your clients on site. And so you have a little client database. Then we can choose the inspector. You can have different classes of inspectors, like more powerful administrators. You can also have a client login where a client can access their reports via a client portal. Choose an inspection date and an inspection time and then add some inspection notes if you want to. The inspection status menu helps you track the workflow of your reports. We use a colour coded pipeline approach where you go from schedule through to completed work. Remember you can add this information on site or do it in the office if you prefer. Now let's add some building details. Adding addresses is easy since Google will search for the address if you start typing it in. You can import addresses in bulk using the import feature within the app. The building name is used to identify different buildings at the same address. You can enter an optional short description of the building. It's a good idea to allocate the report to a town, especially if you work nationwide. Enter other building details as required, such as building age band and building construction. Your reports will look much better with photos and Pocket Survey makes this easy for you. So let's take a building photo. I'm going to choose one that I've already taken because I'm using a desktop computer. But you would normally snap this on site directly from your mobile camera. That's the photo added to the front page of your report. You use a similar approach when taking asbestos item photos. Notice you can choose which laboratory to use for your sample results. Then choose save. You'll notice it's prompting us to choose which inspection type to use since it's a mandatory field. Choose an appropriate inspection type. Then save to add your report to the buildings list. Now we've set up the first part of the report. We can now inspect the asbestos items in the building and enter information into the survey report. So we'll tap into the building record to view it and you'll see the information we've entered so far. We tap the add item button at the top to load the scrollable data entry form to enter details about an asbestos item. So you should choose a particular floor or external area and then optionally you can specify a room if required. You can tailor the list of locations to suit your needs in the app setup. We'll choose dining room. If you have references on your floor plans, you can enter an optional location reference or choose one from the list. A quick note here, we group asbestos records into four different types of sections. Each section will prompt for different information and you would create a record for each section as required. You would use the non-asbestos areas section to log whole areas and rooms that have no asbestos. The excluded area section is used to log whole areas or rooms where you could not gain access. The area summary is used to summarise the makeup of a room or area. This is often required for housing associations. For this session I'm going to concentrate on entering a suspect asbestos item because that is normally the main part of your report. We need to choose the asbestos item being inspected, followed by a description from the menu list and any optional freeform comments. Now the assessment is really easy. The app does all the scoring behind the scenes. Choose asbestos status. Choose a justification reason. This is useful if your UK is accredited. Asbestos type defaults to presumed. A condition rating, the product type, and the surface treatment. You'll notice it automatically calculates the fibre release and the action required. 
However, you can override this by saying it must be encapsulated or you must remove it. That's entirely up to you. You can choose the extent where you can measure using linear meters, square meters, cubic meters or per item, or just leave it as seen. Now, Noggin is best as sample. You tap Y, it shows the automatic sample number created by the app. Each time you take a sample, this will increase. You can put a sample date on as well, and you can add your own sample reference if you have your own numbering scheme. Let's take a photo. The app will automatically launch the camera on your mobile device. However, I'll pick one from my computer because I'm demonstrating the app on a desktop. You can take more photos in a similar way. You can take two photos per item. So that's one asbestos item done. Now choose save. You would do all your asbestos items in a similar way. A quick note here. When you inspect other items, the PS Cloud software remembers some previous selections to speed up your data entry. Once you've inspected all the asbestos items in your building, you can now create your PDF report. You tap into the building record and choose the more prominent create report button. You will be prompted to confirm. It takes about 30 seconds while the software generates the report in the background. You can continue to work on other inspections while you are waiting. The open report button will appear when your report is ready. So far we've covered the essential aspects of creating an asbestos survey report. As you've seen, it's quick and easy to do and produces a fantastic client report. But there's lots more to the software. For example, if your client wants a priority assessment, you can use the priority assessment feature. I'm going to demonstrate that to you now. So let's tap to open the building record. Then, if we scroll down to the asbestos items we've already inspected, we can choose the asbestos item we want to add a priority assessment to. A quick note here, if we tap the pencil icon, we can edit the information in a form. However, if you tap in the middle, we can view the record. That's what we want to do in this instance. So we tap on the ceilings asbestos item. We notice some buttons at the top of the record. We want to do a priority assessment. So we'll tap on the assess priority button, then confirm. This will give us a scrollable form, which we must fill in. It's pretty detailed. It does automatically do all the scoring for you. You need to fill the whole form in. It takes less than a minute. So go through, answer all these questions. It automatically calculates the priority score and show it at the end. We tap save. You then come back to the asbestos item screen. If you scroll down, you'll see the priority assessment. Note, you only add one priority assessment per suspect item. So that's how easy it is to do a priority assessment. Just while we're on this screen, you'll see you can quickly assign sample results for your asbestos items with quick buttons. Not asbestos, asbestos presumed, and asbestos identified. We'll cover the other way of assigning sample results when we look at the pending samples area. Let's go back to the building record with this button here. There are other useful lists apart from the buildings list. For example, you can look at your reports in the items list, where you can see a summarized list of building reports. When you choose a building report, you will see all the items in that building grouped into sections. Suspect items, known as bestest areas, excluded areas, and the optional area summary. Now, we make applying sample results super easy. With the pending samples list, where you'll see all the pending samples for your buildings organized by building, you can easily use the thumbs up to mark an item as non-asbestos. Use the thumbs down to mark it as asbestos identified, along with the asbestos type. Process samples move to the process samples list. This list is where you'll see all the buildings that have had sample results applied, and you can make any changes to the samples in the building record. And even marking asbestos items as no asbestos detected or back to presumed with the question mark. We're getting near the end of the session now. Let me show you some standard features across all the list screens. These are accessed by the icons at the top right of the screen on the list screens. The spyglass icon lets you narrow down your list by using a filter. You've also got the tick icon where you can tick multiple records and then either delete or create a report for the selected records. You click the cross on the left to unselect. The curly icon at the far right is the synchronization button. You use this if you want to force synchronization from your mobile devices to your desktop and vice versa. At the beginning of this session, I briefly showed you some common features of all the PS Cloud apps. So I'm going to show you those now. You will find these features when you tap the three bar menu at the top left. You'll see the common features running throughout all apps. So let's go into each one and explain in more detail. The jobs calendar lets you see your jobs by day, week, or month. If you click on a building address, you'll see the allocated time. You can then tap on it to view the building record. Let's go back to the calendar. You can always jump to today with the today button at the top. 
Now let's look at the maps feature. If you enter the postcode address, the maps feature will show maps of all the buildings in your database. And as usual, you can tap to view the building record. If you want to get directions on site, you can tap the view map button and this will launch Google Maps and allow you to get driving instructions by tapping the get driving directions car icon. So that's the maps feature. The job progress feature is handy for managing your workflow. The by status screen on the left shows you the status of all your building reports. So if you tap pending, you'll see all the pending building reports. Tap the collapse arrow if you want to go back up a level. The middle screen shows your building records in date order with the latest date at the top. You can view a record if you tap the middle of the form. If you tap the pencil icon, you can edit the building reports. The screen to the right shows everything that still needs to be completed. With all these progress screens, you can add a new building record by tapping the plus icon. So that's the progress feature. Let's look at the users feature. As explained previously, you can have multiple types of users, such as an inspector only, an administrator who can configure the app, and a read-only client login. If you tap into a user, you can see details such as email, phone, address, signature, and so on. If you scroll down, you will see all the buildings they've inspected or quality checked. You can view the building record if you tap the middle of the form. If you tap the pencil icon, you can edit the report. So that's the user details. It's back up a level. Let's look at clients. You can see all your clients in this list. If you scroll down to a particular client, such as Fast Asbestos Surveys, you can see all your clients' details when you tap into the record. You can communicate with them on site with these buttons here on the right. You can also navigate to their address with Google Maps. If you scroll further down, you'll see all the buildings and reports scheduled or completed for this client. So that's the client's feature. Let's go back to the menu. There's a place to set up your sample analysis labs. There's a few in there already. If you can add a new laboratory by using the plus icon on the bottom right. If you tap into a lab in the list, you can see the details. You can quickly toggle a lab to be your default lab. And you can edit the full details when you tap the edit pencil icon. The most revolutionary part of all the PS Cloud apps is the app setup feature, where you can customize menus and report sections to suit your needs. You will see several configuration areas. We're going to cover each one. The side mode here, you'll see each area on your mobile device as a separate tab. The app options lets you set some general aspects of your app. One thing you can do is turn features on or off. For example, you might want to turn off the priority assessment. If we locate the show priority assessment feature, we can set it to no. The change will be immediate. To collapse the Show Features section, we tap the Minimize Arrow icon. You can configure many other features, so explore these during your trial period. Let's now look at the Report fields that appear on your front page. In the Report Fields section, you can set the information on your report, such as Company Name, Address, Logo, and so on. Apart from changing options, you can also edit or add to menus displayed in the app. For example, the Locations section shows you a list of pre-configured locations. If we want to add a new location, we can tap the large plus icon. Choose location 1 from the item drop down menu. Then tap on the description pull down to reveal the existing locations. Now we can type in a new location to appear in the menu. Then tap save and go back a level. The inspection options has other menus that you can edit similarly, such as inspection type. Just get in touch if you need further help with the app options feature. Let's move on. In the middle of the screen we have the app design feature, where you have a place to modify the asbestos items shown in the menus. Let's do that now. You'll see the main sections, suspect items, and area summary. Tap on the suspect items section. As you scroll down, you'll see material items and their descriptions. Tap on the plus icon to add a new option. Let's add a new description option for ceilings. Type in our description option, such as popcorn. Remember to tap use. Tap save and return to the previous screen. And then back to the app design screen. That's the app design feature. Don't be afraid of experimenting during your low cost trial. We're always on hand to give you help and support. We can also control the report design to customize the PDF report to your needs. Let's expand the report design area first. Tap into the introduction section and we see the phrases that will appear in that section of the report. Tap on the edit pencil icon to edit a phrase and make any changes you want. You can also hide a phrase from appearing in the report by toggling the show option from white to end. You can also hide or show whole sections from the report. For example, if you wanted to show the sampling strategy section in a client report, tap into the layout item and toggle the show option to Y. That's the very versatile report design feature. 
Now let's look at how help and support works. The help and support screen contains handy little tips about using the app, organised into sections. You can expand each section to reveal more details. For example, if I tap on training videos, you can read some tips and access relevant links. That's the straightforward help feature. Now let's look at tables and exporting your data to spreadsheet files. Note that this tables feature will only appear when using a desktop computer. You'll see the main data tables in the app, such as buildings and items. Let's expand the building table and you will see a spreadsheet view of the data. You can filter this view using the spyglass icon to focus on part of the table rather than the whole. If enabled, you can export your tables to spreadsheet files. Tables are an advanced feature, so don't hesitate to contact us if you want to know more. Now, remember to get your low-cost trial if you're not already a Pocket Survey user, where you will get your first month's subscription at a vastly reduced price. Remember, there's no obligation to carry on your subscription after the trial month, and you've got access to the full software, including free training and support. If you don't like the software after that, that's no problem. Just let us know and we won't bill you, and you can continue your search for a digital solution for your asbestos surveys. Thank you very much for watching. If you want to learn more about any of our PS Cloud apps, please visit our website pocketsurvey.com where you'll see lots of information about all our building and inspection software. So that's the PS Cloud Asbestos Survey software in a nutshell. I hope you enjoyed the training session. Bye for now and see you soon.